everyone, welcome to another episode of Foster Adventures. Today I'm sort of on my own because Mark and Chris will be grafting and I've took the day off work because I'm out with Will Watts and Idna Horizon's team and we're just at Jackson's Bay which is just north of Scarborough and we're going to be looking for some dinosaur footprints so hopefully Will can point us in the right direction and we'll be able to get some nice footage for you guys and hopefully some other fans as well. So bit of rain forecast later but it should be pretty good so we'll follow the Cleveland way down there with the rest of the gang we can see just walking off in the distance and we'll be down onto this bay here and we'll be looking for dinosaur footprints hopefully there's the famous Jackson's footprint way which is about 13 different um, footprints long so that should be pretty good so let's just crack on and see what we can get so it's a bit windy, I hope you can hear me okay. So we've travelled down from the headland, there's Scarborough there in the south, and we're down in the bay now. So this is the remains of Riverbed. The sandstone there is Riverbed. And Rook's just making its way along there with Will. Rook's just been explaining how fossil footprints are formed, the different types of footprints we're going to find, and also what we can learn from footprints, so we can learn the weight of dinosaurs, its height because of its stride, what type of material it ate, etc. etc. It's a bit cloudy there, but it's beautiful, yeah. And there's only another couple of people here, so we're heading that way, which is north, and hopefully, we'll soon get some footprints to show you guys. So, we're just looking now at the famous Jackson Bay trackway here. It was discovered in the mid 50s unfortunately since that time it's been very eroded by the sea and it's not looking its best now but you can still make out the three toed from a three toed dinosaur hopefully you can see it there that one two and the third one will have been there and it's got a decent stride because there's the next one here one two and there probably was one there so you can see where it's been walking Will was saying that it's a plant eating dinosaur although it's the tridactyle footprint which means it's got three toes because the toes are all the same size that means it's a meat, sorry a plant eating dinosaur and not a meat eating dinosaur as you can see that's a bit better one there so its heel would have been where it's wet out there and there's its toes one two three and there's the back of its heel so you can see so as comparison to my foot how big the the dinosaur was and obviously it's moving north now under here there's some more and it disappears under that slab there but I'm sure if we google that and have a look later look for some stills that was taken probably 20 years ago it'd be really pronounced trackway so will's just leading us off now to go look for some meat eating theropod footprints which are hopefully over there so we'll catch up with him and take some more film so i just come across a small theropod footprint there in a loose block it's a hammock, just for a bit of scale so it's probably a meat eating down so it's got try that tile so it's got its three toes there that one's slightly longer so not a giant dinosaur probably I don't know a meter or so high but it's still a dinosaur footprint so very nice to find so if we can just make out there the large round shape there that is actually a sauropod footprint you can just make out the three toes lying in there and if you look carefully at either side of it you should be able to see where it's actually squashed the sand down in a layer so that's a heavy animal it stood on there it's created that impression and the sand squished at the side if you can see that so very difficult to spot and if it wants for will's expert knowledge i just thought it was a lump but once he's explained it to you it makes perfect sense so there's quite a few of these so obviously that was the sand on the riverbed at the time and if we carefully look around there we might see the other ones following through so that's been a really big animal but we're going to crack on and hopefully find some more bits around the corner so we're still searching for footprints uh, not too many but we found some nice fossil wood in there very degraded 
but you can see there's plenty in that block of the piece there. It's obviously carbonized, so it must have been part of uh, fossil fire or something like that on the banks of the river. And then the silts come over it and the sand, and it's been fossilized over the millions of years. So Will's just leaving us off into the distance, cracking on there, so hopefully he'll find some other ones for us. I'm sure they're here. It'd be nice to find one on a small block to add to the collection, but I think I'll be very lucky. So I've just come across a reasonably lucky fossil plant there, which we may warrant a bit of better look at, if you can see that. There you go. I don't think I'll be able to save it, but I shall have a look at the block. But that's quite nice, that. I've not got too many plants, and um, obviously with them being real delicate, they're quite hard to fossilise, so I may spend a bit of time looking around here, wonder if we could maybe do that or split it, see if there's anything else in there. So, as you can see, I've just harvested that plant. I'm quite chuffed with that. There's another large piece of wood there, that's a decent sized piece of wood there. As you can see by the size of my hand, that's quite a good looking piece of wood. So that's about us done for the day now. Will's leading the group back, so I'm just going to catch up with him now. I've had a little look around for some more plants, but I couldn't find any, which is a shame, but that one's okay, so it just needs a little bit of prep. I did break it, um, taking it trying to lighten the load somewhat but it'll go back together and it's in nice condition so there we go and there's a picture of Scarborough Castle in the background so we're heading back now so the weather's held off which is good so hopefully maybe just film something else on the way back so just a couple of interesting features here as we're wrapping up walking back to the car this part here was the bottom of a river you can see the sandstone, hopefully you can see the layers if I get a bit closer. As, it's, as the sand's come down the river, it's been laid down over time. And then eventually, obviously, it turns into sandstone itself. But this was the river going out towards the basin, which is now the North Sea. And then if we just look back, we can see the grey layer at the side there in the cliff is from where the river flooded and that's the silt laid down from when the river burst its banks and flooded so also if we walk around this side there's the rest of the group going back towards the car now if we look at this we'll get some better idea as well of it coming out so you can, if you can imagine, that is a riverbed with the dinosaurs walking along it. Must have been absolutely amazing. A bit different to where nowadays, I think it was as far south as Morocco is now. So it would have been a bit different climate. But that's it, it's just starting to rain now guys. So I think there's just a big couple of sauropod prints to pick up on the way back. That just look like rock poles but will informs me that they are and uh, he's the man that knows so it's just starting to rain now so we'll get back we'll take a couple of pictures of them and then that's it for the day so just the last bit of film now guys so we've got here it looks like a rock pole to you or me but i've been reliably informed by will that it's the rear leg print well footprint of a sauropod so that's been a really big animal as you can see I mean that's a huge print you can see at the sides where it's actually squashed the sand down and obviously now what's turned to stone that's not since fossilization that's when it's been sand and it's squashed it down and just in front of it as well there's another footprint there again and then there is some more over here they are extremely difficult to spot so i think if anyone wanted to come and look for footprints i think if you want to give Will a bell, he's on Facebook and the internet on Hidden Horizons. He'll be more than happy to uh, bring you out on a trip. Had a really good day, really enjoyed it. Weather's held off. Found a nice piece of plant, so that's good. So there we go, new experience for me. I've learnt a lot off Will, so thank you very much. And that's it, so hopefully we'll see you next time. 
and that will be in September and hopefully Staves or Ravenscar. So keep tuned and thanks for watching guys.